Thank you for joining in this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to focus on planning your management groups. Management groups are containers, I would say, <laughs> right? It is kind of a container uh, that can help you to manage your access policies and uh, compliances for multiple subscriptions. Because if you remember, management group will hold the down level as the subscriptions. So you can have multiple subscription and you could apply your access policies and complaints levels. So you can limit in which regions across uh, several subscriptions can be created, maybe a specific subscription for EU region or maybe for a pack. Such things can be created uh, region wise also. You could virtual uh, virtually manage when uh, specific subscription for your virtual machines can be created if you would like to have and you could you know provide your user access to multiple subscriptions by creating one role assignment uh, that will inherit by other subscriptions so these things can be done let's say you have here uh, multiple subscriptions like a sales corporate ID you could assign a policy or access uh, directly a role assignment that can inherit for example in my case tailwinds corporation can have a inherit policy to have a full control uh, for specific users on a sales uh, management group or corporate IT even the production which is a down level inherited can have the access you could uh, define in a such a way so you could even monitor and audit across the subscriptions. Let's say sales has a sales subscription inside uh, sales uh, management group. You could audit there uh, or you could even monitor uh, the entire subscription. You could assign roles, policies, these things you can do it. So things you should know about the management groups are management groups can be uh, used to aggregate policies and initiative assignments via Azure policies and management group. Uh, tree can support up to six levels of in-depth so that's a, a depth that you can follow management group can add uh, group tree can support up to six level of depth and this uh, limit does not include the tenant root level uh, or the or the subscription level okay this does not include so just a six level you could have any principal user or service principal uh, within the Azure AD tenant can create a new management group if hierarchy protection isn't enabled so anybody can create it so make sure that you know you should you know follow that standard and as your role based access control authorization for management uh, groups and operations isn't enabled by default you need to enable the access by default uh, is not enabled by default all new subscriptions will place under the root management group so you could you know move your subscriptions to uh, another uh, management group uh, by creating based on your nature of business uh, let's say sales or corporate or IT kind of thing but there are a few things that you need to consider when creating the management group so that's uh, very important so let's apply our uh, tailwind traders uh, company let's say this company has uh, a sales department and corporate uh, office as well as the IT department so these are the three different uh, different departments has and the sales department manages uh, your offices in west side and east side uh, and also uh, the corporate office uh, which manages maybe uh, let's say HR and legal information uh, legal uh, legal specific uh, departments it might be you no know, handling by corporate and also the um, information IT department that's IT department might have a production or development or research so like that you know you might have a uh, research R&D and uh, maybe development like that you know multiple departments it might have so how do you know represent this so you could actually create a typical hierarchy a business or understanding about the management group so far you should be able to create in a such a way uh, to manage the governance in the mind basically you should you know, think all the time about the how best you can apply your governance uh, for designing your management groups for example uh, you could apply the Azure policies at the management level so if you could you know apply your Azure policies at the management level all the workloads that uh, require the same security compliance connectivity features settings can be you know automatically applied so that's uh, one point and uh, you should you know think that your management groups always 
always try for a hierarchy reasonably flat level don't go for you know deeper level try to be in a flat level like this don't go you know uh, under development maybe you know dev 1 dev 2 dev 3 don't go you know deeper level just you know stick to the flat level and these are the best practices uh, when it comes to the uh, designing your management groups and also consider a top level management group uh, this management group supports a common platform policy so let me let me show you from the uh, ppt also so we talked about the keep the management group at the reasonably flat we talked about uh, considering a top level management group uh, this is the top level management group which will uh, give the support for common platform policy as your role assignments across the whole organization for example uh, Tailwind um, Tailwind's uh, management group is a top level management group for all your organization wide policies can be you know, applied directly from here and also you should be you know, able to consider an organization or a department level structure so that's very important uh, when it comes to the organizing the things uh, by creating your organizational structure so that it will ease to understand for example here the sales corporate and IT and the production uh, management groups and also consider uh, geographical structure also so for example um, the geographical structure will allow you you for a better compliance policies in a different region for example maybe west side east side management groups maybe in a sales uh, that might you know help you in a different way and also you should you know consider about the production management group so a, pro a production management group uh, creates a policies that can apply to all corporate productions uh, servers or products for example uh, production management group provides the product specific policies and corporate applications and also consider your sandbox management group maybe for a testing uh, or maybe you want to test some kind of you know things in a development or maybe in a but you don't want to you know test it on um, isolate basically you want to isolate in your production or some other environments then you should you know consider sandbox uh, management groups also consider isolating sensitive information and a separate management group for example the corporate management group uh, provides more standard and compliance policies for the main office uh, because it's, it's it's isolating is needed because it has a sensitive information so it's better to put it into a separate management group so that you could apply a stronger policies and compliance policies this is uh, this is where uh, these are the things that you should you know consider when you create the management group so these are the a uh, few points I would say you no know, seven golden points that you need to you know, consider when you are, are trying to create a management group hope this helps on uh, how to create your management groups and thank you for watching this and I'll catch you in the next lecture for designing your subscriptions